Good morning brothers and sisters, back for another video. Um, I thought this video we're going to take a look at that term that we find in scriptures, it's the term valley, the valley of vision. And it shows up in Isaiah 22 where we got our understanding or at least partial understanding on the key of David. And what this really actually shows us, it really fleshes out the key of David much better once we get our understanding to a particular name that this term links us back to. So we're going to take a look at that. Okay, so bear with me just one minute while I get my information up here. Okay. No, I'm not supposed to do that. All right, now, Isaiah 22. All right, so in the very first verse of Isaiah 22, this is what we get. The burden of the valley of vision. Excuse me. What aileth thee now, that thou art wholly gone up to the housetops? Now, we discussed this entire chapter over the course of many videos now. This chapter keeps coming up, all right? when in con connection in particular to the key of David and to what Solomon was doing all right this is so clear it's so vivid the picture once you get your understanding of the key of David all right but this term the valley of vision actually links us to a character in the, uh, the scriptures that we don't pay a whole lot of attention to and so I'll give you his name, and then we're going to read a bunch of more scriptures, and we're going to tie it all together, okay? We're going to attempt to do that for, you, for your thoughts, for you to tie them together yourself. But, um, so the servant's name is um, Gehazi, all right? And that was Elijah's servant, and his name actually translates to, and it's Hebrew number 1522, and it actually translates to the Valley of Vision. That's his name, the meaning of Gehazi's name, all right? So keep that in mind. But before we go to that combination and what that leads us to in our understanding, basically when you're reasoning out scriptures with the Spirit's help, all right, what that understanding is going to lead us to, okay? We're going to look at that. But Hosea 2.14 says this, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and lead her to the wilderness and speak to her tenderly there i will give her back her vineyards and make the valley of a core into a gateway of hope and there she will respond as she did in the days of her youth as in the day that she came up out of egypt all right the valley of a core now what does a core mean well a core means disturbance all right that's what a core means a valley on the border of Judah, a valley of trouble. So the Lord says, there I will restore to her in the desert, in the wilderness. You go look the word up. I will speak to her tenderly. I will call her out. And there I will give her back her vineyards and make the valley of Accor into a gateway of hope. That's a, a gateway out, I believe. But Accor means disturbance. All right? It means a troubling time this gateway so when we look up um, the derivative of a core it's going to take us to Hebrew number 5916 a core is 5911 when you hit on a core uh, the derivative of it it'll take you 5916 it means to stir up disturb trouble in a primitive root properly to royal water Remember that, to royal water. Figuratively, to disturb or afflict, to trouble or to stir up. What does Isaiah 22 verse 5 say? So here we were looking at the burden of the valley of vision. All right? Here in Hosea 2.14, she's given a valley of a core. All right? Here we're looking at a valley of vision. Elisha's servant's name, Gehazi, means the valley of vision all right so what are you talking about connecting the whole three all right let's go to verse five and see what five says took place in this valley of vision verse five says for it is a day of trouble 
and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God. The Lord God here is Daughter Zion's number 136. We've discussed this. Of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. So here we get our understanding that the valley of vision here is actually a great day of trouble and treading down. It's a great day of disturbances. A core is called the valley of disturbance. All right. So again, we're going to link it back to Elisha's servant, Gehazi. Now, what did Elisha pray when um, they fell into trouble and uh, uh, they were being attacked? And uh, Elisha could see the great host that they had on their side protecting them, but Gehazi couldn't. And so Elisha prays to the Lord to have Gehazi's eyes opened so that he might see this great host that only Elisha can see. And so it takes place. Gehazi's eyes gets opened to the great host that he otherwise couldn't see. This is important to understand. We'll keep going here. Now, here we've linked the valley of Accor, that's in Hosea chapter 2, verse 14, to a valley of trouble, a valley of vision in Isaiah 22, and the Valley of Vision is the translation of Gehazi's name. All right. So hold all this in mind. Flip. We're going to flip here. So. Why did I write that number down? Let me go back here and look. <laughs> um, so treading down in Isaiah 22, verse 5. Okay. For it is a day of trouble and of treading down. What does treading down mean in verse 5 of Isaiah 22? Well, this is the meaning of it. Okay, do I got the right one? Okay, of trouble. Let's look up trouble first. I'll get there. 4103. So, for it is a day of trouble. 4103. This is what it means. It means tumult, confusion, disquietude, discomfiture, disturbances, confusion, panic, tumult, turmoil. And it is from 1949 which means confusion or uproar, destruction, discomfiture, trouble, tumult, vexation, vexed. We know Israel's often referred to as being vexed, all right? And um, what does um, treading down mean? Well, 4103 is a feminine noun. So we can look at this as a treading down of something in a female context. Hebrew for 001, treading down, is also a feminine noun. So something feminine may be being tread down. A treading down, subjugation, oppressive, a trampling, a treading, a trodden down, underfoot. Who allowed it? Is what I've got here. Who allowed it? So let's go back to Isaiah. 22, 5. What does it say? For it is a day of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. They had gone up to the roof, rooftops and they had shifted from wor worshipping the daughter of Zion to worshipping the hosts of heaven, it says. So we're also told what happened to the leaders in this day a vision in this valley of vision. All right, let me keep going on here. What does it say about um, the rulers? My thoughts goes in a hundred different directions. All rulers are fled. Verse 3. All thy rulers are fled together. They are bound by the archers. All that are found in thee are bound together, which have fled far from thee. Uh, all your rulers have fled together. Capture it without a bow. They were captured without a bow. We want to keep that in mind. 
All your fugitives were captured together. They had fled far away. Because that's actually going to take us to what God says the rulers did. Alright? And uh, that's a bit further on. Maybe I should find it so I don't lose that train of thought. It's in the very last page. Uh, what does it say? It was found in... Isaiah 30, yep, chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the obstinate or stubborn children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, forming an alliance, but not by my spirit, and heaping sin upon sin. And it speaks of them that took briberies with thieves. They were in cahoots with thieves. That's what it states. All right. So here, your rulers were not, ca they were not captured with a bow. They had been captured long before. All right. And that's where Gehazi comes into play, believe it or not. So Gehazi's name, Valley of Vision. The interesting thing here is Elisha lived in Dothan. All right, this is where we're going to start moving our thoughts around a little bit more. And we're told of uh, Elisha's servant in 2 Kings chapter 4, if you want to go read it, and in 2 Kings chapter 6, and where Elisha lived, all right, which Dothan is only mentioned twice in scriptures. Now, this is the interesting thing that you're going to link back to the Valley of Vision, which is Gehazi's name, all right, is also linked to where Elisha lived. Dothan. What does Dothan mean? Okay, sorry if I'm confusing you here in the valley. I don't mean to. <clears throat> Dothan, and I had to go to Abram Publications in order to get this understand because they did not give it to me in the Strong's Hebrew Concordance. All right, so it was, this is what they gave me in the Strong's Hebrew Concordance. It's Hebrew number 1886. This is Elisha's place where he lived. A place north of Samaria of uncertain uh, derivation. All right? So they're not sure what it derives from. However, I'll put the link below. All right? From Abram Publications, the meaning they determine it means is a decree or a well. The name appears to be related to the Chaldean or Chaldean word for well. The N-O-B-S-E list reads Wells for the name Dothan. And Jones Dictionary of the Old Testament proper has the name of two cisterns. So Dothan, where Elisha lived, meant two cisterns. What's the definition of a cistern? The definition is a reservoir. That's interesting because reservoir here in Isaiah 22 in the Valley of Vision, which just so happens to be Gehazi's uh, meaning of his name, has two reservoirs in it when you get reading Isaiah 22. You see where I'm going with this thought? I'm not doing it very well. Um, and reservoir, uh, it all, a cistern also means an underground reservoir for rain water. You see where I'm going with this? So, when we get looking at it, and I forget which king it was. It was Abram, I believe. Uh, king Abram. They kept coming against the one of the kings of Judah or Israel. I forget which king. I'm sorry, I should have went in, but that wasn't the focus of my study. And he kept coming against that king, and that king knew where he was going to pop up every time. And uh, the king got upset and he said, how does he know? Just how does he know? And somebody says to him at this point, now you figure it out in your own thoughts, what you're thinking. Somebody says to him, the prophet Elijah keeps telling him where you're going to show up. He keeps telling you that. So um, we know that there was spies in various camps. We know this to be true. Alright? 